Hey guys, Ian here and welcome to another Creature Creation session being recorded once again live on Twitch. Today I'm once again going to be generating 12 random animals. I'm then going to pass them on to the Twitch chat for them to choose just three that I'm going to turn into some new weird and wonderful creature. On top of those three animals, I'm also going to be getting the Twitch chat to vote on an attribute as well. So we'll be having three different animals as well as some random attribute that we're going to be incorporating into our final animal as well. And with that being said, let's generate our 12 animals that we're going to be starting with. And they are a gazelle, a parrot, a monkey, a baboon, a musk deer, a pig, a springbok, a hedgehog, a bald eagle, a parakeet, and a buffalo. So I'm going to go ahead and put those into some straw poles and get the Twitch chat to vote. Okay, I think that Twitch chat has probably had enough time to decide on their animals. So let's take a look at the results of the straw poll. And the first animal that we are working with is... A parrot. The second uh, animal that we are working with is the the springbok. A parrot and a springbok. Our third animal is going to be a hedgehog. Wow, this is going somewhere weird. And finally, our attribute. Let's see what we end up with. Here we go. A sci-fi elemental. A sci-fi elemental. Oh. Blimey, what have I let myself in for? I guess we can only find out by going into Photoshop and seeing what happens. <laughs> I struggled with this one. If I'd had just those three creatures to go with, then I don't think I would have had any problems, but the two attributes that I was given, the elemental and the sci-fi, really confused me. I wasn't sure how to bring them all in together. That was until it was suggested, rather than thinking traditionally about the elemental powers, to think something more along the lines of using plasma or electricity. That went quite well, and once I'd combined the animals together in a way that I was happy, I could definitely see how I could incorporate electricity and plasma into the final animal to help emphasize that sci-fi theme. Okay, after a brief exploration in Photoshop of these animals, I think I've come up with something. I had a little bit of difficulty, but I started out by just kind of combining the three animals together as best I could just off the top of my head. So we've got mostly springbok here with the wings of a parrot, as well as the spines from the hedgehog, which is the theme that I followed through with the hedgehog, because like, I couldn't really think of how to incorporate the hedgehog into the animals in any other way. I moved on from that and kind of came up with this idea of having this creature back up in more of a threatening kind of a stance. After coming up with that idea, I decided to start playing around with the face of the creature and really, really started hitting on a design that I liked with this by combining the hedgehog spines with the springbok, as well as adding in some various bits of tech gear to bring in that sci-fi element that we're looking for. Finally, I came up with this idea of adding in some of the plumage, especially the tail feathers from the parrot, I think coupled with the colour schemes of the parrot going on in there as well, I think this creature is going to end up looking really quite spectacular. So it's time to jump straight into our final design. Despite the fact that this creature had a theme that I wasn't really sure how to go about achieving, I did find the whole process quite interesting. There are a number of things that I did during the painting which I wouldn't normally do. Some of those things I think acted against me and some of them I think probably helped me. One thing that really strikes me looking back at it now is that I didn't seem to spend any time trying to further develop the creature after I'd come up with a design I was happy with. Normally I'd spend a bit of time playing around with the anatomy and pushing different proportions here and there, and I didn't at all. I didn't even try and come up with any other interesting poses. Even though in the original sketches that I did, there was one pose where it was sort of back up on its hind legs, which, looking back at, I really like now, and for some reason I didn't use it. And I think it's down to the fact that there were a few elements of this creature that I personally was uncomfortable with, so I almost tried to just rush straight into the creature and not spend as much time trying to develop it as I normally might. I think that's a bit of a shame, I, I wish I could go back and change that now, but it's definitely something that I will keep an eye on in the future, even if I'm working on something that I'm not particularly comfortable with and I don't think that it fits my particular skill set. I will definitely be trying to keep an eye on myself in the future to make sure that I don't end up skipping any design processes again. 
All that being said, this creature really was an education in perseverance more than anything. There were a couple of times during this one that I just, I wasn't feeling the direction it was going. I wasn't happy with the creature, I wasn't happy with the lighting, I wasn't happy with the background a lot. I went back and changed it again and again. The first two were really, really bad and the final one I came up with is a lot better, but it's still it, I think it's still lacking. Maybe it's because it's using that sci-fi element that is something that I don't play with. I'm just not used to doing it, so that's something that I should really push and explore in the future, try and bring more sci-fi into my creatures and my designs in the future. But as I say, I kept wanting to not abandon, but just try and rush through, but I managed to stop myself and I did take a step back from it for a while and have a breather and looking back at it afterwards I was much happier with where I was at with it. Which I think is an important thing for an artist to do, to step back from their work, to separate themselves from it and really critically analyse it both looking for mistakes in it and things that you can improve in the future or maybe fix um, in the next session that you're sat down with that picture and to look at things that maybe you hadn't done before that have really worked and emphasized this picture in a way. Every time I finish a painting I do tend to sit down and look at it for a good 20 minutes, half an hour after it's finished and really analyze to see where the problems are and how I could possibly fix those things in the future. I am very happy with the result of this creature. I don't think it's the best creature I've ever painted, but that is probably mostly down to the fact that I'm not used to painting sci-fi animals or bringing in sci-fi elements to paintings at all. So that's possibly something that I know that I should focus on in the future. So there you have it, persevere, push yourself outside your comfort zone, explore new genres and techniques, things that you would not necessarily do of your own accord, something that you're possibly unfamiliar with or uncomfortable with. All of these things can and will help improve your art and make you feel more comfortable approaching new subjects and subjects outside of your comfort zone much more easily in the future. So knowing now that sci-fi is something that I need to work on and develop further, I'm going to spend a bit of time in the future really looking into and researching sci-fi concept design and various things that other people have done to try and emphasize a sci-fi setting and a sci-fi character or creature. And hopefully next time I get a sci-fi animal in one of these creature creations, I will be better prepared for creating something that I am happy with. So we're getting towards the end of this painting now. I'm sorry I haven't really spoken about the painting itself, but I really felt that this experience that I'd had whilst creating it was far more important and would be of far more use to you. And it's certainly advice that I wish somebody had given me when I was younger and just learning how to do art. That pushing yourself into genres that you're not naturally drawn to can help improve the genres that you are. Well, out of all the creature creations that we have done so far, this one has definitely taken the longest, clocking in at about six hours. Now, I know I always say I had no idea where this one was going to go to start with, but in this case, I genuinely had no idea where it was going to go. Sci-fi elements and elemental elements are not my forte. They're the things that I find hardest to get across in a painting. So this one had both of them, plus the three animals that we had to go with just weren't, I didn't understand quite how they were going to fit together at all. And the creature that we've come up with at the end of this has, I think, successfully managed to bind all of those different things together. And again, Twitch chat has come up with a fantastic name for it. We're calling it the Blue Striped Plasma Buck, which is great. But as I say, I think we've managed to get everything into there. We've got the parrot, we've got the spring buck, we've got the hedgehog, we've got elemental and sci-fi. I mean, the elemental is sort of arguable. Is plasma really one of the elements? But I think, I think we can get away with it with this guy. Well, once again, I am really happy with the way that that this guy has turned out. I really hope that you guys have enjoyed it. If you have, be sure to leave a like on the video. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. And as always, guys, take care, and I will see you next time. <laughs>